Welcome to Knowledge 12, Fighting for a Cause. Today we're going to be reading about Jackie Robinson, Champion of Equality. Again, we're starting off with our civil rights movement, uh, giving, getting equal treatment for those, uh, for African Americans. And today we start off with Jackie Robinson. Before we hear more about him, let's go through our vocab words. I will read the word. You repeat it after me. Courage. Balance, an admirable, proud. So if I was talking about somebody I respect, what word would I use? I'd use the word admirable. What would I use if I was voting for a president? What would I vote on? That's right, I'd vote on a ballot. So remember in our timeline, we've learned about... Uh, Three awesome people, and we have a uh, we have Abraham Lincoln here just as a reference of the timeline where we're at. So Abraham Lincoln here around the same time was Susan B. Anthony, and then we heard about Eleanor Roosevelt, her fight with human rights, and then Mary McLeod Bethune. And man, the busy, 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 tire, tiring life that she lived, but man, accomplished so many things. Today we're going to hear about uh, Jackie Robinson. So after today's read aloud, you should be able to explain who Jackie Robinson was, explain how Jackie Robinson fought for civil rights in sports, and show an understanding of the word challenge. Let's listen to this extraordinary human. Baseball has been a popular sport for a very long time. How many of you play baseball? But did you know that there was a time when African-American baseball players and white baseball players did not play together? This all changed when a man named Jackie Robinson showed the world what a great player he was. He also showed the world how much courage he had, too. What does that word courage mean again? That's right, it's bravery when facing a dangerous or difficult situation. This is the incredible story of Jackie Robinson. Jack Roosevelt, or Jackie Robinson, was born in 1919 in Cairo, Georgia. He was the youngest of five children. His parents were sharecroppers, people who worked the land for others for very little pay. Jackie's father left his family when Jackie was a baby. His mother, Mally Robinson, moved the family to Pasadena, California to be near relatives who would help her raise her children. The Robinsons lived in a small house on Pepper Street. Mally worked many different jobs to support her family. Despite the hardships, Jackie grew up in a close and loving family. From an early age, Jackie was a talented athlete. When he became a student at John Muir High School, his brothers, Mac, Mac and Frank, encouraged him to play sports. Jackie played football, basketball, baseball, and tennis, and he ran track too. He played shortstop and catcher on the baseball team, quarterback on the football team, and guard on the basketball team. In track and field, he won awards for the long jump. After high school, Jackie attended Pasadena Junior College. Again, he played basketball, football, and baseball, and he ran track. On the football team, he played quarterback and safety, he was shortstop and leadoff hitter for the baseball team, and he broke the school's long jump record. Before long, the University of California in Los Angeles, also known as UCLA, offered Jackie an athletic scholarship. Remember what that word scholarship means? That's right, it's getting paid uh, to go to a school or have uh, the cost of school be no money or maybe a little bit of money. And who else received a scholarship to go to school? Yeah, remember Mary McLeod Bethune did. Jackie was happy to accept. While at UCLA, Jackie proved himself to be a good student and an amazing athlete. As a UCLA student, he, completed, he competed in four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and track. Jackie was selected for the All-American football team which is a team of players from different schools who are the best players in the country. When Jackie left college, he began playing football for the Honolulu Bears, a Hawaiian semi-professional team. When the United States became involved in World War II, 
Jackie joined the United States Army. After two years, he was promoted to the officer rank of second lieutenant. Growing up, Jackie had been aware of discrimination. When Jackie joined the Army, he realized that there was discrimination there, too. Jackie felt the need to challenge these attitudes. When you challenge something, you question whether it, something is right. When Jackie was in the Army, he refused an order to sit at the back of a military bus. Jackie felt that the color of his skin should not determine where he could or could not sit. Jackie was court-martialed or charged with a crime for refusing this order. However, his in his trial, he was found to be not guilty. Jackie left the Army toward the end of World War II, was signed to play shortstop for the Kansas City Monarchs. The, Mon the Monarchs were a team that belonged to something called the National Negro League. It was, a, it was in this league that African-American players were allowed to play baseball. Jackie traveled all over the Midwest during that season with this league. One day, a man named Branch Rickey saw Jackie play. Branch Rickey was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Branch thought that Jackie was an incredible player. He wanted Jackie to play for his team. The only problem was that the Brooklyn Dodgers was an all-white team. So back then, African-American players and white players did not play professional sports together. Branch met with Jackie and told him that he needed Jackie to be very brave. He wanted Jackie to become the first African-American to play in the all-white Major League Baseball program. This was referred to as breaking the color barrier. This meant that before, the time, before this time, a person's skin color was a barrier or something that stopped them from playing in many sports leagues. Branch wanted Jackie to break this barrier. He explained to Jackie that at first he would probably be treated badly by most fans and even some of his fellow players, but Branch was willing to gamble or take a chance that Jackie was strong enough to break the color barrier and change attitudes. He believed that Jackie had self-control and courage. So what sort of person did Branch Rickey think Jackie was? So he probably thought he was strong, he was probably courageous, and someone who might not fight back. Before Jackie agreed, he asked Branch a question. Jackie asked, Are you looking for someone who is afraid to fight back? Branch replied, No, I need a player with guts enough not to fight back. So if he... Branch doesn't want Jackie to fight back. Is he gonna? Is he fighting with? Is he gonna be violent at all or non-violent? Jackie Robinson agreed to be that man. Jackie traveled to Daytona Beach, Florida, for spring training. He began playing with the Montreal Royals, a training team for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie played well. The most difficult days for Jackie were often when he was off the field and traveling with the other players. During this time, Jackie could not stay in the same hotel as his teammates. He could not eat at the same restaurants and diners. Jackie did not like that one bit, but he was determined to be the first African-American Major League Baseball player in the United States. And then it happened. Just six days before the start of the 1947 baseball season, Jackie got the call that he had been waiting for. The Dodgers wanted him to play. Sadly, not all of his teammates were happy about this. Some said they would rather sit out and miss a game than play with Jackie. But Jackie's teammate, Pee Wee Reese, came to his defense. You can hate a man for many reasons, Pee Wee said. Color is not one of them. On April 15, 1947, when Jackie put on the Brooklyn Dodgers uniform, wearing the number 42, he broke the color barrier as the first African-American player on a major league team. Jackie made his debut at Ebbets Field before a crowd of 26,623 people, including more than 14,000 African-American fans. How do you think Jackie felt on the day he finally played for the Brooklyn Dodgers? He probably did feel kind of proud. Jackie knew that he would have to be strong and concentrate on the game and nothing else. 
At first, there was a great deal of hostility, or lots of anger and unfriendliness towards Jackie. People called him names, but Jackie just played baseball. Some of his teammates would not sit with him, no matter. Jack, game after game, Jackie focused on playing, even when pitchers threw balls and tried to hit him. In one game, during the first year as a professional player, Jackie received a seven-inch gap, gash, or a big cut on his leg when a player tried to uh, deliberately step on him. It was an attempt to intimidate him, or to kind of try to make him scared and afraid. Still, Jackie refused to quit. He simply said, I'm not con concerned with your liking me or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. Do you think Jackie Robinson had courage? Later in his baseball career, Jackie hit a home run, a triple, a double, and a single in the same game, which is called the cycle. Jackie could run, hit, steal bases, and play second base like nobody else. His friend and teammate, Duke Snyder, said he was the greatest competitor I had ever seen. By the end of his first year in the major leagues, Jackie had played in 151 games for the Dodgers, scored 125 runs, and had 175 hits, including 31 doubles, 5 triples, and 12 home runs. He was named Rookie of the Year, and in 1949 he was chosen as the most valuable player in the National League. Jackie had proven that the world of professional sports is far better than when everyone can participate in it. During Jackie's career, the Dodgers played in six World Series, which is the championship game. Jackie played in every one. He could hit, and he was fast. He averaged more than 110 runs per season and had a 311 career batting average. Jackie helped the Dodgers win six National League pennants and one World Series title. These impressive achievements made Jackie Robinson one of the best players to have ever played Major League Baseball. Jackie retired from baseball in 1957. Jackie said, The way I figured it, I was even with baseball, and baseball was even with me. The game had done much for me, and I had done much for it. Jackie Robinson was the first African American inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He received many other honors, too. In 1997, Major League Baseball honored Jackie by retiring his number from all the Major League Baseball teams. This is a very special honor, and it means that no other major league player on any team can ever wear his number. Remember what his number was? That's right, number 42. Now, every year since 2004, however, all major league players wear Jackie's number, 42. Every April 15th to remember the important role Jackie Robinson played in the major league baseball. One other cool fact about major league baseball, so you remember what I was talking about when Jackie Robinson first started playing baseball. He was in the Negro Baseball League, and they were separate from the all-weight professional baseball league. Well, the Major League Baseball decided that all the stats, so all the home runs, hits, strikeouts, all these stats that the players earned in the Negro Leagues are now counted as professional in the major professional leagues. So it's really cool that they're honoring uh, those people, the people who are playing, even though they were separated at the time, they're going to show honor to them and count their stats, which is a very, very cool step. And that just happened in 2020. So awesome achievement there. How did Jackie Robinson fight for civil rights in sports? Well, remember, he didn't fight with violence. He just fight, he literally only just fought with um, his the way he played the game and the way um, he reacted when others were trying to be mean. He didn't, he wasn't mean back. Remember, our, our word work word for today is the word challenge. I will say the word, you repeat it after me, challenge. Challenge means to question whether something is right or wrong. The coach decided to challenge the umpire's call that the player swung at the pitch. Was there a time you wanted to challenge someone or something? So in our next read aloud, we're going to be hearing about, uh, we're going to continue with our civil rights and we're going to be hearing about somebody who uh, 
got the civil rights movement going and probably would be considered the mother of civil rights. And we're going to be hearing about Rosa Parks.